Good to go. Okay. All right. I think we should get started over here. Hi there. This is Christian Dye and Mike Stewart. It's February the 11th. Uh, we're here to give you the real estate uh, market update of what's going on in Vancouver. So let's get right into it over here. First and foremost, the information given today is not to promote the buying or not buying of any real estate. We advise that you do your own research and, of course, pair up with a professional. So a quick market update, uh, some stats review over here. What's going on in the Lower Mainland in Vancouver? Well, January 2021, listings were up 86% from December, one month prior. So this is 15.7% higher than January in 2020. So it is going to be a busy year. And we've already, we're already off and running to a strong start. So now remember uh, what we've sort of mentioned if you uh, uh, listened to us before. Analysts predict sales price would be, would be uh, trending downward when sales to listings ratio is below a 12%. And usually when the sales to listing ratio is above a 20%, that means that it's showing that prices are trending upward. So let's see what happened in November. We had detached homes at 27.9, townhomes at 40.1, condos at 23.9. December, the numbers went up 35.2, 50.4, and then 33.1. Now in January over here, we've gone to 26, 37 and 27. Now it's a little bit cooler than December, but I think that's just because sales to active listings, what's happened is of course, active listings has started to come on a lot more, which is what we could see from the 86% more from December. So there, there's no signs of, of prices going down. I cannot see that at all, but we do see that there are more listings coming on the market, which is a good thing. There's more options for people who of course want to buy. And uh, there's a little bit more confidence for those who want to sell because now they'll have something that they'll be able to buy. The other stat that I'd like to show over here is from the Real Estate Board of Greater Vancouver. This was provided for me by Mike. If you are interested in getting a copy of the full report of this, then I encourage that you connect with Mike at the end of, uh, of the webinar over here, and I will give you his email. But a couple of things that I wanted to highlight over here, and one of them is the one-year change average, the one-year change average. And what we're going to notice about this one-year change average is that all of the numbers are positive. All of the numbers are positive. And uh, it, it helps us to show over here that the numbers are really trending up over here as compared to last year. Now, if you take a look at the three year, uh, it, uh, it, in some areas, it was almost flat, 1%, you know, 3.6, even a negative 2%. But that's because if we were to draw a straight line, you know, we really seem to peak around that 2017, 2018 area. And now, of course, we're in this uh, uh, pocket where uh, we're reaching uh, those peak prices again, if not surpassing it. Uh, uh, Mike, did you want to uh, uh, comment over here on any of the numbers? Yeah, no, it's interesting what's happening right now. We've seen a real sea change in the market that is beginning to be seen in the stats. The one thing to keep in mind when you're, looking, when you're using stats to look at the market it's very much like using a rear view mirror, you know, your rear view mirror to drive your car. Okay. So you know what's behind you, you know what's happened, but you don't really know, you can't look far down the highway ahead of you because, you know, my crystal ball is as good as your crystal ball as anybody else's crystal ball that's on this. But, you know, like myself, I can see what's actually happening right, right, right in front of the car, which is what's going on in the market now. And what we're seeing in the market now is, things are very active, but it is somewhat uneven. Um, you know, certain markets are on fire and certain markets are relatively soft. Um, you know, single family houses uh, in the city of Vancouver are extremely hot, East Vancouver in particular, more so than the West side, because there's a broader audience of people who can afford Mike, you um, there? Yeah. Oops, Daisy, can you hear me? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Okay, apologize. Um, I've got a whole bunch. I'm using my phone, and a whole bunch of calls keep coming in. Um, you know, the North Shore of Vancouver for single-family houses is extremely busy. 
but we're not necessarily seeing that for condos. And then again, condos, which were fairly soft um, during COVID-19 and you, where you saw price pr downward price pressure, you saw um, big, big falls in volumes. Well, those volumes are back up and those volumes for condos are above where they were before COVID-19. Prices are above where they were for COVID-19 in some cases. Um, but now what we're seeing, particularly for larger properties, that are condos or attached houses that are as a refer, referred to in the uh, stats package, you're starting to see significant upward pressure. You're seeing, starting to see multiple offers on you know, properties that are priced well, presented well, easy to show. Uh, and you're selling yeah, as the market. Yeah, yeah. Like, like over oh, here, uh, let me finish first. He's, he's doing a presentation right now, he can't. Oh. Right. Oh. I think one one of the uh, one of the things to to highlight over here is I want to do comparison against uh, single family detached houses uh, as compared to uh, uh, some condos. If you take a look at the one year change in Greater Vancouver, sort of as a as an overall one year change of almost eleven percent. Uh, my neck of the woods, North Vancouver, twelve percent. Port Moody, fourteen point five percent on these single detached houses, which are like you said, hot as hell. If I compare the same thing on the apartment over here, uh, Greater Vancouver, two point two percent, North End, five point nine, Port Moody, two point nine. We notice that it's 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 across the board less. Uh, as you said, there are some things that are really really hot, and some things that I wouldn't. They're, they're just not as hot right now. So you know, one of my questions to you, Mike, is: Do you think that this is an opportunity in these prices? Uh, you know, essentially in the condo market, uh, or do you think that maybe there's a reason why they haven't gone up that much? Uh, what's your yeah. opinion there? Yeah, I think there's absolutely a, an opportunity right now with condos. Because of COVID-19, everybody wants larger spaces, bigger spaces, so they can work from home. But I don't think people are going to work from home forever. And I think people are going to want to be in urban high-density neighborhoods once the vaccine is widely distributed and everybody has it. Um, you know, because people are going to be, are going to get sick of being by themselves. You know, there's a lot of people who are challenged, who are struggling with mental health and isolation right now. And, and a lot of the, you know, a lot of what keeps people from struggling with that is the <clears throat> community feeling and the friendship bonds and the companionship that they get from going into the office or going into work. And a lot of people are not happy about working at home. So I think you're going to see people wanting to live in condos again by either renting or buying throughout the region and are going to be less excited about large sort of further out isolated properties because, um, you know, they want to get into the office. And I think a lot of employers are going to change their tune because a lot of employers are going to want to have their employees come in and work because I would argue, and from what I've read, you know, businesses and institutions do best when you have people close together who are able to interact quickly and efficiently in ways where you can see body language and understand what people are getting at, which I don't think you can get from a Zoom meeting. Yeah. Um, so I think you're going to definitely see upward pressure on price when condos come back. And the thing is to think about is the Bank of Canada has said that they're going to keep interest rates incredibly low, at least until 2023. And so once the COVID vaccine is distributed throughout the population, those super low interest rates are still going to be there. And then two other things that are going to happen is immigration is going to start up and tourism is going to start up. And those are going to create massive, those are going to create massive, create massive amounts of demand for um, high density <clears throat> urban properties. Because when new immigrants come to Canada, they typically rent apartments or they typically buy apartments. Um, and, or, you know, but they typically rent when they first come and same thing with, uh, you know, uh, with, uh, tourism, you know, the, the tourism industry, a lot of people, you know, stay in short-term rentals when they come here. And so I think you're going to see significant upward pressure on condos going forward. And I think right now is an opportunity to buy, yeah. buy a condo. No, absolutely. You know, and, and I, I pull this real estate forecast over here and the bulls, the Canadian real estate association is making a Canadian prediction of what 2021 will look like. And they believe that there is going to be a positive 9.1% increase in housing. Remax Canada predicts between four to 6% and Royal LePage uh, predicts 5.5%. So I, I, I do tend to agree uh, the markets will continue to go up for all of the reasons that you've already mentioned over 
here. Uh, it, it just sort of puts us in an interesting position right now as to, you know, uh, what we think uh, uh, is happening and what we think is, is going to go on over here. So I think one of the, uh, one of the things that I, I, I want to ask you over here is that you and your team, of course, are dealing with buyers and sellers consistently, which is why we do a monthly update, because things change so quickly. Every single month, something has been different from November, December, January, and then, of course, now over here. Tell me the changes that you're seeing, even changes you're seeing from just one month ago. Yeah, there was an interesting meme that was shared on social, and it had two pictures of a Barbie doll. Um, one of them was, it said, it was um, the type of realtors in the current market we're in. And the one Barbie doll on the left was buyer's agent, and she looked like perfect, perfectly, perfectly groomed Barbie doll. And then on the right, it said buyer's agent, and she had a black eye. She had a face mask. Her hair was askew. And so what's happening right now in the market is you're finding that um, people who are representing realtors who are representing sellers are having a really um, relatively easy time of it because their listings are selling quickly because we're in a, in a seller's market. Whereas buyers agents are getting beaten up because their buyers, unless they're totally prepared to move forward with a subject free offer, they're not getting properties because of the multiple offer situation that we're seeing. And so all, the, all, all my colleagues, everybody that I'm working with, you know, they're, they're having challenges, you know, of course we're getting, we're putting deals together, but it's uh, a little more difficult when you're representing buyers in this market. Um, when you're particularly when you're looking for single family houses, larger um, condos and um, properties that are really in demand, you need to do your due diligence beforehand. So you, first and foremost, you need to get in touch with your mortgage broker. You've got to get your mortgage broker, all the paperwork that they need so that you can put in a subject free offer. If you want to buy a property, you Typically, if it's competitive, you want to do your home inspection beforehand. You want to get those documents read so you can submit a subject-free offer. What I mean in what a subject-free offer is, you, you don't – typically what we do is we get an accepted offer, and then you have seven days after which to get your financing, get your home inspection, read the documents, or if it's a single-family house, do an oil tank scan, that kind of stuff. For single-family houses in a lot of areas and condos in many areas, you've got to do all that stuff first and then submit your offer subject free. So, you know, that's the thing in this market you need to do. Yeah, you know, uh, one of the things I'm, I, I just sort of was thinking about an opportunity. I'm always thinking about opportunities over here. It's an ugly time to be, uh, it's, a, it's essentially, it's an ugly time to be a buyer that needs to buy. Like someone who, you know, sold their place two months ago and now needs to buy a place, but all of a sudden there's this frenzy over here. Uh, so I feel for those people because they got to go in pretty hot and heavy. And it seems like the market is going up. Like the numbers that I've seen, it looks like it just in one month, uh, uh, you know, the things that are selling are selling for significantly more because of this over asking environment. Over, I was hearing crazy numbers, 50, 100K over asking, uh, you know, and uh, but I'm wondering, is there an opportunity over here for someone who perhaps... Um, is there an opportunity perhaps for someone who is downsizing and has that house and then wants to go into a condo potentially like, you know, uh, you know, a retiree parents or something of that sort? Yeah, well, you know what, there is an opportunity with, especially if you're downsizing, if you've got a single family house in a very hot area, buying first and then selling after can often be a very good way to dramatically increase your equity. Now, consider this. And if you're going to take this um, course of action, make sure you consult with a realtor before you do this, because there is an element of risk to this. Okay. So, and I've done this myself. And what, what I have done in the past is in a rapidly rising market, what I did was I bought first. Okay. And, uh, and the market that I was in was rising dramatically. It was about 20% a year. And so I bought it per month. Was it Pardon me? per year or per month? Uh, it was about 20% per year, but the, oh. Price points were quite high, yeah. um, you know, several million dollars. So it was, you know, almost a hundred thousand dollars a year. Oh, sorry, a hundred thousand dollars a month. A month um, for 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 an extended period during the this year. Yeah. And so I bought a, I bought a property first, and then I got my house ready to sell, and then I sold it. And basically, I got I made about a I think about a four to five hundred thousand dollar gain by waiting to sell my house because the price 
of properties was going up so quickly where, where I was. So in a market that's rising quickly, a way to deal with this is to buy first, make sure you speak to your financial planner, your mortgage broker, your accountant, to make sure that this is a sustainable and low risk course of action. But buying first or buying a presale in a rising market can, can be a very good way to do well in real estate. You know, people, you know, often think they'll sell first and then buy, but often buying first and then selling after can work, you know, consider this. So you have a single family house that's worth $2 and you want to buy a condo that's worth a dollar, but your single family house is going up by 20% per year. You could potentially buy a condo now for a dollar. Okay. And then wait, and then wait for your single family house for a year to go up by 20% so that in a year's time, your single family house is worth actually $2.40. Okay. So you actually get a 40 cent gain rather than if you sell your house right away for $2 and buy a condo for a dollar, you miss out on that gain. But again, very high risk. So make sure if you're thinking about this course of action, consult with your realtor, consult with your mortgage broker, consult with your financial planner, consult with your accountant. Yeah, okay. you definitely need a financial team if you're going to do something like that, uh, just because of the bridge financing, the high cost of it. Uh, but, you know, uh, maybe that's for another topic. Uh, tell me this, uh, what areas do you sort of find that, you know, maybe, maybe are some deals or some areas that you sort of think are undervalued, but it won't be for long and people can kind of scoop up a decent deal over there? It's, uh, it's getting challenging to find all that. Um because interest rates are so incredibly low. Like I've mentioned before, you can get a, you know, you can get a variable variable rate mortgage that's insured for 0.99%, which is amazing. Or a five-year fixed rate mortgage. I've seen myself 1.59, but I've heard 1.49 and I've heard 1.39. So, you know, the real deals, if you're aggressive and you're an investor would be assignments of contract, which are very difficult for people to sell and you can get value with those. Um, I myself have an accepted offer on assignment of, of an ass, on an assignment of contract. We're waiting for developer permission, and I've got a very good deal on it. But I hope I get developer permission. I may not. Um, you know, another thing to look at would be um, condos that are um, maybe a little dated, but in a very good building, uh, particularly in the downtown core, the West End, that kind of thing. Those are really quite good value. For single family houses right now, pretty much everything that's single family house across the region um, is a strong seller's market. So that's very challenging right there. Um, yeah, it's mostly in condos. You know, mostly it, condos. It, would you say that it's a good time to upgrade uh, or would you say, uh, uh, because I guess the big challenge is that if you sell your place and, and, and it's your, your primary resident, you still got to move somewhere else. Would you say that a person who might want to consider that is the person thinking of upgrading or the think I, 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 it wouldn't make sense to make a lateral move, I would assume. But would you say that yeah. if you're going to do that in this market, you would do that if you were upgrading or would you say that if you're downgrading? For which? the Where you buy first and sell after? No, where, uh, where you sell, where you'd consider listing your place on the market right now. Um, uh, uh, who like which type of person would it, would it benefit the most? And would you buy first and then sell or sell first and then buy? Well, what I'm selling, what I'm telling people who are looking to sell right now is start looking for something to buy now, because the, basically <clears throat> if you're buying and selling, it's kind of a wash. If you're buying something, if you're making a lateral move and you're buying the same thing in a market like this, typically is <clears throat> in a market like this, it's typically easier to sell and harder to buy. Whereas when we're in a soft market, it's harder to sell and easier to buy. Um, so right now, what I'm telling people is if you're looking to sell and you want to buy something else, no matter what it is, make sure you go and look at what's available for what you want to buy so that you can get what you want when you sell. Because the last thing you want to, to, the last thing you want to have happen to you is uh, that <clears throat> you sell your property and then you can't find something to buy and you're sitting in cash. Because if you're sitting in cash in a rising property market, the relative value of that cash goes down every time the value of real estate goes up. So in a rising real estate market, you don't want to be sitting on the sidelines of cash because you're going to, you know, you're going to lose out. You're, quite frankly, you're going to lose out every time the price of real estate goes up. Um, but yet 
upsizing, downsizing. Upsizing right now is actually rel relatively challenging because condos aren't as hot as single family houses. Um, so, but it's it's been the opposite at different times. Right now, single family houses are really hot because people still want big spaces, but I think that will change, especially when the vaccine gets rolled out. And maybe when the vaccine gets rolled out, maybe that's the better time to upsize, go from a condo to a single family house because condos I think are gonna get really hot once things go back to normal and single family houses may soften. So I think there's opportunities, but again, my crystal ball is as good as yours. Yeah, no, I 100% agree. In the tail end of our talk over here, we wanna open it up to questions. So if you've got a question, put it in the chat. We're here for you. We wanna talk, we wanna field your questions, okay? So put it in the chat. Uh, Mike, uh, uh, you have ac do you have access to the chat, Mike? Can you see the, the questions? Yeah, here, just give okay, me a second. So, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to start to, uh, uh, by all means, throw your questions in the chat, and I'm just going to start to uh, to tidy it up over here. So, uh, you know, our, our philosophy here at Latitude West has always been that all of your money should basically not be in the stock market. We're not, the, you, you got a lot of financial advisors who say all your money should be in the stock market. We're not like that. We love real estate. We believe that it should be a combination uh, of stocks, real estate, and you know, cash reserves, fixed income. Um, if you're incorporated, there's even more opportunities over here. I'll give you a case example that I've given before of the types of clients that, that, that might have a question. Some newly married couple, let's say they both have condos, they wanna start a family and upgrade their home. And what are their options over here? They can sell both of their condos and upgrade. They can keep both and try to save up as a down, a down payment on their own, or they could keep one of them as a rental and sell the other one for a down payment. But of course, then the question is, which one do they sell? This is a perfect example of how so many financial advisors can't help with this question. They can't do the analysis well enough. All they're doing is speculating, giving their opinion. Whereas me and my team, we would do an in-depth cost benefit analysis, figuring this out. Um, and, and, and this is just on, on a person's personal home. But if you have investment real estate, if you, if you wanted to try to build a real estate portfolio, who is helping you that's qualified in order to do some good real estate analysis as compared to what your money would do in other investment vehicles, such as the stock market over here. So what are the type of things that we do with our, uh, with our clients over here? You know, we tell them not to try to time the market. Uh, right now in the real estate market, we do know that um, rates are staying low, and, but demand will end up being high over here. So what I try to do over here is to review their strategy. If you are a, a, a client who would like to talk with me, I'm going to invite you to do so. It doesn't cost anything to talk with me to see if there's a fit, if there's, see if there's anything I can help you with. Okay, Mike, so I think we've got our uh, first question over here. Yeah, thanks, Eugene. I appreciate the question. Um, yeah, so Eugene's question is, how's the downtown condo market been since September 2020, specifically for one bedrooms? One bedrooms, typically in a normal hot market without COVID, one bedrooms are always the thing to get hottest first. And they, <clears throat> they are quite hot because um, in, in normal markets, because they're, you know, they have such a broad audience, first time home buyers, investors. A lot of people like them, but right now they're not as hot as they normally would. And they're not as hot as they are as, you know, not as hot compared to single family houses. Um, and that is because of COVID. Now that is starting to change and you're starting to see multiple offer situations for high quality product that's priced well, but in certain buildings and in certain areas, particularly uh, more expensive options, sort of like in the high 600s to the mid 700s, there's a lot of supply right now. There's a personal favorite building of mine, the Arc by Concord Pacific. I think I looked today and I think in the two towers there, there's about 21 listings and most of those are one bedrooms. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, one bedrooms are, are, are doing okay and we're able to sell them at fairly good prices, but, um, they're a little softer than what they could be and a little soft compared to what's happening with say single family houses in the city of Vancouver or, you know, single family houses in the Fraser Valley or other places. So um, yeah. Are, yeah. What, what are your thoughts, Eugene? I'd love to hear more. And also please, and everybody else, please do ask us a question. You know, we've got time for questions and we'd love to hear your thoughts and, uh, and any questions you may have. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, feel free to throw it in the chat over there. And uh, as always, uh, we try to do this on a monthly basis. We've set the date as March 10th. That's a Wednesday uh, the next time. It's on uh, my uh, um, latitude-west.ca workshops. Uh, uh, you could register there. Um, and uh, uh, if you are ready to connect, uh, uh, I can be reached at assistant at latitude-west.ca. Uh, Mike can be reached at mike at mikestewart.ca or at 604-763-3136. You could also visit him at vancouvernewcondos.com. All right, so here's the next one, Mike. Is Vancouver West for single family still pretty hot for properties below 3 million? 100%. Yeah, absolutely. That market is very, very active. And you're seeing that price point going up, you know, like for a while there in Kitsilano and places like that, you could get a single family house, you know, an old rough house for high, you know, just under 2 million or in around 2 million. Now that's like 2.3, 2.4, 2.5 and up. So yeah, that market is extremely active. And again, lots of demand Um, and that's local demand. You know, what you're seeing is above $3 million. The market has picked up uh, in premium places like the West side of Vancouver, West Vancouver, where you see, you know, quite a few listings and for over $3 million, but it's not like it was prior to the foreign buyers tax because primarily what we have now, you know, aside from what the um, misinformed people at the Vancouver Sun or other places say, there's not a lot of foreign buyers active in the Vancouver real estate market because of the foreign buyers tax, which is now 20%. Um, so yeah, that, that under $3 million mark in the West side is quite active. And, and yeah, you're seeing, it's definitely a seller's market for that. Um, yeah, it's, it's a, that's a challenging market if you're a buyer. It's a great market if you're a seller. And, um, you know, basically for single family houses in the city of Vancouver, um, if you have government that, um, you know, doesn't want to see, you know, large scale upzoning and development, um, you know, that it, it just, it just restricts the supply of new housing and it just pushes up the price of properties um, where, you know, people, you know, of existing properties. So a single family house in the West side is, is a fantastic thing to own and, uh, and a great, great asset. Yeah. So. I, th- I think right now the big challenge is, you know, uh, the bidding and if something is hot, especially if it's at a price point that a lot of people can afford now with the new lower rates, uh, I, I think, uh, 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 finding the right property seems to be the, uh, the toughest challenge, but if you're a seller over here and you've got a new place to go, or you've got your eye on uh, a market that's a little bit cooler, you're probably sitting in a pretty fantastic position over here. All right. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to wrap it up over here. Thank you guys for your questions. If you have more questions, you've got our emails by all means, don't have to wait a month, Uh, uh, connect with Mike or connect with myself and uh, we will see you guys next time. Uh, So thanks a lot for uh, everything and uh, good luck and stay safe out there. Thanks for the questions, guys. Take